Hello, everybody. Let's wait a few seconds to see if there's anybody that can join me live. I have heard from quite a few people who are trying to get the EC done prior to the end of the year, and they're frustrated. They had a score re release for the CPA exam, and this is your CPA exam pep talk. Whether or not you passed or failed, but you are starting to feel crunch time because the end of the year is fast approaching. And I can imagine that if your CPA exam scores were not what you were expecting, they are really starting to feel the pressure now. And I thought, what can I do to help you in this kind of year up to the end of the year, all of the exams are changing. And there's a lot of marketing push to get you to try to pass prior to the end of this year. How can I help? And what can I say to maybe motivate you and just get you in a better mindset about what does it take to get this done? And what happens if you don't pass all the you're trying to pass before the end of the year? So that's what we're going to talk about today. And I hope that um, you jump in. And if you have questions, please ask your questions. Thanks for joining in. Um, because this is a topic that I think a lot is talked about. What content do you need to know on the exam? What areas are going to be areas of focus in terms of a study perspective? What should we do? How should we do it in the study part? But there is not a lot talked about about the mindset of the CPA exam and how do you go in after failure? How do you go in feeling really nervous, ready to throw up and do well on a standardized test that is four hours long? And I get all of those feelings because you just, that's not covered in a review course. So after failure, after getting less than a 75, it's really hard to go back. What do you even study? how do you do this because you are feeling miserable and it's october and it's getting colder out and all of the things okay take a deep breath this is a passable exam and that's something that i can say with the seen a lot of people who felt the way that you feel on this exam who've gotten less than a 75 myself included and can go on to have a very successful career and pass the exam without reinventing the wheel. You can do this and I know that you can. So don't get down on yourself. This is not a you problem, it's a studying problem. Maybe you're not studying the right information. Maybe you're studying enough, you're just not studying the right information. Or the test that you had on that particular day, maybe you weren't feeling well enough to make it happen for yourself or the content that you got that day was not a match for your skill set and not a match for the content that you were studying. And it doesn't necessarily make you not capable of becoming a CPA. So if you can shift your mindset, that was just not the best day. It doesn't make me not enough. It makes me more motivated to go back in there and do better because I can do this. Now, what do you do? How do you study after you have a score that's not quite what you expected? Now, I can sing this from the rooftops. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And it's the study guide that's provided by the AICPA. It's called the AICPA Blueprint. It's confusing because they didn't just name it the AICPA Study Guide for the CPA exam. But that's what it is. And most review courses do not tie directly to it. Some of them do. But regardless, no matter which course you're using to study, and especially if you've gone in and not passed, you're gonna go to the AICPA Blueprint, you're gonna print out a fresh, fresh copy, and you're gonna look at it in depth. You're going to go line by line on it and figure out what information is included in that that you do not know. Go through yes, no, maybe. Very easy coding system. Do I know this? Yes. Could I have a conversation over dinner with someone about this topic? Yes, that's a yes. That's not going to be an area of focus when you go back in to study again. And you don't necessarily have to study directly from your review course and only your review course. Look for outside resources if you're going into retest. And those don't have to be paid resources. That can just be Googling or chat GPTing these topics. And that 
will help you get over the hump of the CPA exam. Because a lot of people that I talk to, they're not missing it by that many points. It's just a couple points. They're in the low 70s. That says to me, you can do this in the short term. You don't have to relearn and reinvent the wheel to get past a 75. If your scores are lower than that, you're going to relearn concepts. And the concepts are where you're missing and you're not quite understanding the actual meat of the concepts. If you're in the low 70s, it's just a mismatch of skills. You're not getting the questions that you know and understand and you need to dig back into where are your gaps. So those are the two different categories you may fall into on your scores. Okay, so now you have this blueprint, you're digging into it and you're kind of, okay, picking it apart. These are the two things that I recommend. Look at what verb is at the front of these representative task statements. That verb will indicate how deep you need to go. This exam is not trying to test you at a level that is a practitioner who's been in the field for 20 years and they know everything there is to know about XYZ topic. No, this is, this is an entry level exam. It's one to two years of experience focused. So there will be a handful of hard technical topics in the mix. But if you get those right, you get a higher score. The baseline, the 75 cut line, is not going to be something that's not passable for someone from just studying, right? You don't have to have a ton of real world experience to take this test and pass it. So that's good because you can do this, right? That means that you can get through this exam and get your CPA at the end of your name and feel that accomplishment even after the adversity of not passing. It's a mindset. Okay, so you look at the verbs, you dig into exactly what you need to know. Do you need journal entries? They'll tell you if you need to know the journal entries if you're doing FAR. Okay, so now there's different levels. They indicate the levels on the AICPA blueprint and the higher level tasks, there'll be analysis and evaluation. Those levels will be on task-based simulations. And so those types of tasks, you can kind of match them up. Boop, boop. Those types of levels need to be studied in greater detail because those will show up on uh, task-based simulations, period. So when you go back in for a restudy, focus on those areas because they're telling you what's going to be tested at that level. Anything that's application-based, figure out how to calculate it. Understand how to do variances. Understand how to do all of these things that you need to have some sort of awareness. If there's a journal entry, they're going to give you two pieces. You're going to have to back into the plug on the other piece of the journal entry. That's stuff that you're expected to know and understand conceptually when you go in on a retake. And maybe that's why you're not, you're not passing as you're missing some of these areas that are expected. And maybe you're not getting all the super high technical stuff that's kind of deep, but you're not, you're not getting the areas they're expecting someone to know. And that's something you can fix. That's something you can study for and go in there and rock it the next time. Okay, is there anybody who's joining in today that has questions? If you do, I'd love for you to pop them into the chat. I will answer them. I will if you're interested um, on this little pep talk. Okay, so the, now I wanna talk about mindset about the exam. And this is something, my post about it went viral. There's two big areas that I just am very passionate about. One, you are running your own race on this. There is no timeline on the CPA exam. If you have not passed a section and you have to go back in, yes, it extends the timeline, but there is no race to do this. People who are very successful CPAs are successful CPAs at any age. So you can start, you can take a break. If you have something come up in your life and you had to take a break and you had parts fall off, that's okay you can start again. This is a perfect time to start again. All the content is new. You're not gonna be studying exactly the same stuff you studied before and you can get through. Okay, so that's mindset number one. You are not behind. This is your own race and you can do this on your own time. I tend to think, generally speaking, for a working professional, it takes about 12 months to get through the exam, including one or two failures. That's general rule. If you have more than that, or you had some sort of life hurdle that happened in the middle of testing, you're gonna push into the 18 month mark because that was kind of the timeline. 
going into this new year, you have a little extra time because they've extended these uh, exam uh, drop-off periods where the scores would start to drop off longer so that you don't have to worry about retesting while this new exam switchover happens, which is great. Perfect timing if you want to start to take your time, study every single day for 10 minutes, and you can get through this. Okay, so that's mindset thing number one. This is your own race. You are not behind. Mindset thing number two is, and this was something that I learned through experience, a failed exam is a practice exam. It is not a failure in the sense that it was when you were in college. You are not, it does not reflect poorly on you that you didn't perform above a 75. It is extremely common. So common that no one talks about it, but at least half of everybody taking this exam has failed the part that you just took. And then the number of people who passed all four parts on the first try is, I have to look at the st statistics on it currently, but I think it's like 20%. It's very low in the grand scheme of things. The majority of CPAs have taken a section more than once, even if they don't tell you about it. So just know that that's normal. It's part of the process. It's part, it's part of the academic rigor of this thing. And that's good. And you, you should be value that in the experience because you're learning a lot about yourself in this process of resilience. And that's great. But it is very inconvenient from a timing perspective because you had expectations on when you wanted to get this done and you have to shift your expectations. So inconvenient. And it's discouraging because now you have to go back in and redo it. That said, it was a practice test. So you are now more capable. You know exactly what's going to be on the exam and how they're going to ask questions, which is above and beyond what your review course could have offered. The best review course, and I'm not going to say which one I think it is, but the best review course is, is not the exam itself. It's a guess of what's going to be on the exam. A review course provider is not given this window into exactly what they're testing. They get the blueprint, which you also have. That's what they're provided. They, they don't have some sort of um, special access into what's on the exam, except you do because you went and took it. And the review course provider can't do, go and do that. So you've been in there, you've seen the exam, you know exactly how they're asking questions. And now it's time to take that as a practice exam. Don't let it make you feel bad and go in there and do it again. And you can do it this time, right? And if you can't, guess what? There's gonna be fresh sections at the new, new year. If you can't make BEC happen and you're just sick of studying for BEC, you're in luck because there's going to be new exams starting on January 1st that you can start studying for and have a fresh start. And you can study something that's completely different than what you were studying. And that's great. That'll, I think that would be a nice fresh start for you if it doesn't happen by the year end. That'll be okay. Okay, if you've hung with me this far, thank you for joining me. If you have questions, I'm going to open it up for questions and see if there's anybody who wants to hop in here with questions. I'm just checking into the live session to see how many people are joining us. There's quite a few of you um, who haven't said anything. If you're, if you're here, tell me where you're from. Um, if you're a CPA candidate, um, you're you know, pop it into the chat. I'd love to have a, a Q and A session if there's any questions that people have uh, about the CPA exam or mindset going into the end of the year and this new exam that's coming in 2024. Uh, thanks to everybody who, who has joined me um, on this wonderful day of score release. I know it's, it's a challenging one for many people. All right, let's see. It doesn't look like there's anybody hopping in here with questions, but I really appreciate Anybody who's joined me for this long, I will give it a couple more seconds. And then if there are no questions, um, I will cut off the live recording. But if you do end up having questions and you do see this on the recording version, recorded version, I should say, go ahead and send me a message. We can have a conversation in my direct messages. I know a lot of people when this topic is discussed don't like to talk about it publicly. So if you would like to take it 
into the direct message format, feel free. And uh, we can set up uh, a future group coaching session um, that I can chat with some of you about kind of mindset and things to look at when you go back in for a retake. You can do this. The CPA exam is not going to break you as a person. It's you can do this. So don't give up on yourself. Don't get down on yourself. Hang in there and go back in there and rock it the next time. All right. Thanks for joining me today on this live and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.